What's up, 49er fans? I'm Jason Aponte. I'm joined by a special guest, Matt Harmon of Yahoo Sports and Reception Perception Guru. We're going to talk not about the 49ers quarterback, which is refreshing. Stick around real quick. Welcome, everybody. Let's go, Niners. My name is Jason Aponte. Jason Aponte. I'm Jason Aponte, joined by Matt Harmon of Yahoo Sports Reception Perception Guru. Guys, this is a special thing, man. Matt is not only great at what he does, he's actually a really nice guy. I got a chance to meet him at the Super Bowl as well, too. He's very real. It's like, you know how you, you get a perception of people, not reception, perception, pun, you know? You get a perception of people at times, and, and sometimes you think, you know, how they say, not necessarily like a hero, but don't meet your heroes. But, like, Matt is really like that. So I just want you guys to, to know that. Matt, what's up, man? Thank you for giving me some time today. Well, Jason, you're uh, way too kind f- in multiple ways, uh, you know, uh, but I appreciate you, man. Yeah, glad we finally got to do this. You know, um, I would normally say any time is a good time for me to come on here and talk, you know, uh, one specific player we're definitely going to talk about. Life's just been very busy these last few months. You know, my, my wife and I moved from uh, L.A. to Virginia Beach here. You know, not not a small feat pulling off a cross country move, but I'm glad that finally we found the time to make this work. So I'm excited to about our conversation today, man. And I, I appreciate meeting you as well. You know, it's like the Super Bowl. you never know, you know, who you're going to run into, right? Like, I mean, and that, that goes from all walks of life, you know? So uh, it was great to run into you, to meet you, man. And, uh, you know, I'm glad it happened before too many beers, you know, maybe uh, at least on my side, that's for sure. <laughs> you know what's funny is, is just a, a quick recap of that. So uh, during Super Bowl week, when you credential, they had this 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 dinner. And, and this was my first time. So I was really green with that. And I thought, well, how does this work? Like, what is this dinner going to cost and everything? And like, I walk in and they're like, well, everything's on the house. And I yeah. happen to run into Matt as soon as I walked in. So I I actually Barely. feel the same way about like being able to just say hi coherently before everything else kicked in yo i i know no one wants to hear about this type of stuff but like that event specifically because it was so massive and spread out you know uh charles mcdonald who i'm sure people know he works with uh yahoo as well we literally got there and did like or maybe it was actually i don't know it wasn't charles that you know this is how fuzzy things are Mm -hmm. um i think it was might have been actually my podcast producer uh the head of yahoo podcast brett and i walked like the entire lap of a thing you know before pretty much like anybody else had got there it was just like yeah how am i and it's night too it's all dark how am i supposed to see anybody here but then again like i ran into you i ran into a bunch of people i used to work with in nfl i ran into people all across the industry and like it just happened so um pretty again crazy stuff and, and again it was really great to meet you man i appreciated it absolutely and kind of to your your point is I, I know my regular viewers are probably looking at like where is jason at i'm not in my house because there's there's a lot of construction going on in my uh, condo right now, so I can't even be there. So, But I had to make it happen, so I'm here at my brother's house. You know, Yankee stuff, uh, the leg from uh, Christmas Story, uh, you know, is behind me as well, too. So, you know, okay. s- similar similar interests. But anyway, guys, if you don't know, you should know. And, and I want to make sure that this doesn't come off like me, you know, being paid to talk about this. I really use reception perception as a tool for myself. And I really enjoy it because, one, it helps me, you know, dominate my fantasy football leagues, which I play for for money, which is, you know, really helps. But it also helps me hone in on the one position that I love watching just as much as Matt does, wide receivers. Like, And when I always tell people about where do I start when I want to watch, watch what you really enjoy. And I enjoy watching wide receivers. You guys know that. But, Matt, I wanted to give you a chance to speak about reception perception and the methodology. And and there's two two charts that are are thrown around a lot on the internet success by route run and route run percentage just a just a quick rundown on that for the people that don't know sure yeah and it's funny you mentioned like what position do you like the most that that was how i um gravitated to to wide receivers you know i i grew up as a carolina panthers fan um steve smith was my favorite player uh, so, you know, it was just naturally I really got into the wide receiver position. And, you know, when I was sort of trying to transition from, you know, my, my normal life and like, how do I kind of make my way in the football space? You know, I obviously didn't play in the league. I didn't, you know, I don't had a lot of connections or anything like that. For me, it was like, why don't I try to answer the one question that is burning in my brain about football, which is, you know, when we're watching games on Sundays, you know, the wide receiver 
they like run off the screen, right? Like what's going on that whole time? You know, obviously we know they're running routes. They're trying to get open. They're trying to catch the ball. But if you're a wide receiver in a, in a, a given game, and it's fun, especially the 49ers that have so many good players, right? Like you're lucky if you get eight to 10 targets, like that, that's a really good number, but these guys are playing like 50, 60, 70 snaps. They're get, you know, they're running 30 to 40 routes sometimes in a game. What's going on on all of those routes. And, you know, like if they're getting open, shouldn't they get credit for that? Even if like the quarterback doesn't get them the ball or, or whatever, like the play breaks down at the offensive line level. So for, that's really what reception perception is. I'm trying to, cut out the noise and isolate wide receivers from the outside variables. Cause we know again, with production, <laughs> no, where I know we're not going to talk quarterbacks, but uh, no, well, we'll probably touch so, on it. we might touch on it a little <laughs> bit, but like, obviously uh, the, the, the wide receiver needs a quarterback to cooperate, to get the ball to them. But so many other things need to go right. Like wide receiver production is so inherently dependent on those outside variables. So what I do for reception perception, and this is sort of the methodology that I developed is, I go in over an eight game sample for NFL players and college prospects. And I chart every single where the way they line up on every single snap in those games, you know, we're trying to categorize, are they an X receiver flanker slot? You know, maybe somebody that bl really blurs those lines like a Debo Samuel, you know, is he lining up in the backfield? So starting with what role do they have? And then, also charting every single route that they run in that game. That's where the route percentage chart comes in. You know, the colors on the charts. I, I uh, Especially with the success rate one, I, I do get a little irritated with, like, the overemphasis on the charts uh, because – there's so much data on the site. You know, I'm telling you, if you subscribe, like it goes way beyond the, the two charts. But yeah, everything is color coded to the individual route average. So, you know, how often do they run each route relative to the NFL average and the success by route chart, as you mentioned, how often are they get open? How often are they getting open on every single route that they run? So this guy like runs a post route on 25% of his routes. You know, how often is he getting open relative to the NFL average? Green for above, yellow for within the average, red below the average. And then again, I also chart contested catch metrics, broken tackles, you know, again, where they line up, like there's a ton of data that goes into reception perception and it is just me sitting there and watching all of these guys. And um, like you said, I love to do it. So I, I I'm very like, it's a lot of time. It takes a lot of time every off season to compile all the data, but man, I mean, I'm, I'm really uh, enjoying it more and more every single year getting into all these receivers. So that's kind of like a high level view of what RP is. Matt, and, and the best part about that is, is I love what you said about production right because there is this emphasis on stats and stats should tell one part of the story i feel like reception perception is the perfect blend of stats and film and 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 kind of charting that 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 sort of charting right because if a guy's open for how many times and he only gets the ball one or two times you'd say well this guy had a lousy game no this is where yeah. you have to actually watch the games and that's what i really enjoy about this the best part about reception perception in my view and this is for my fantasy football people that, that are watching I promise we're going to get some 49ers stuff is you can chart a breakout. You can chart the guy who's about to break out, right? If he's open, he can't just not get thrown the ball here and there. And Matt, I'm mm -hmm. glad you brought up Carolina Panthers. Cause I feel like I'm one of the Curtis Samuel hive. I'm still part of it. Like I oh, still believe, same. I still believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. I, I still believe in him as well too. Uh, I know you and I are both big Terry McLaurin guys. And for the, the 49ers people that are here, you're a big Brandon Ayuk guy. So before you get into the reception perception side of it, tell me what are some of the things that you saw in Arizona State? Because he was regarded by many as a bit of a raw route runner, I, I would mm -hmm. say. Uh, it, but what, what drew you to him immediately, especially when you have a draft where CeeDee Lamb comes off the board and, and certain other, other receivers, right, come off the board that, you know, were highly regarded, Jerry Judy. And Ayuk kind of felt like he was some laying in the weeds a little bit. Yeah, uh, and to be honest with you, I not that I thought he was a bad draft pick or I thought he was a bad prospect, but you know, I certainly didn't expect to like him in the NFL as much as I have liked him in the NFL. Um, because like you mentioned, there was some raw route running there. Now I, I sort of pushed back and you know, my uh, business partner, my podcast partner, James Cohen, I just talked about this on, on our recent show because he's a big Pac-12 guy. I mean, like a full Pac-12 sicko, you know, will stay up until all those games are over and, and and the whole thing. So he sort of really pushed back on the notion and so did I that, you know, he was that Brandon Ayuk was sort of like a gadgety, create a touch type of player. Now he was really awesome as a yak player. There's no doubt about that. And I think that was obviously really exciting about him. I think that's probably one of the things that um, 
really drew Kyle Shanahan to, to Brandon Ayuk was that he was so good in the yak game. But I think from like a route running perspective where I, for where I thought he, you know, could maybe take a step in the league was against like pure off man coverage, you know, especially as a vertical player working uh, sideline routes. And, you know, I think that was actually something from without even looking at the reception perception data as a rookie in, in, in 2020, you could see him make those plays against off man coverage, you know, working like corner routes, out routes, stuff like that. That was really, I think, if you're going to look at something that was where he shined as a, as a route runner at the collegiate game, definitely not in, in all the traditional senses. And he was a very like chaotic guy um, as a route runner in college and maybe not the most consistent separator. Again, true technician. Now, when we get to the NFL, we'll, we'll talk about how that evolved. But yeah, I think that was the thing to me is that he looked like a guy that could make a lot of big plays against off-man coverage. And, and that was really exciting that he had those obviously after catch burners, the broken tackle ability in college, but he definitely showed you an ability to work as a vertical player as well. Yeah. And I'm definitely right now, I, you know, I've logged on to receptionperception.com. I have, I'm, I'm a member clearly I'm, I'm, I'm about to pull up Brandon. I use um, charts so we could take a look real quick, but you know, the, the best part about this is is the 49ers have two guys that are regarded in the upper echelon of receivers, I think. Or, or I feel like one is and another guy has the talent to get there. And I feel like he's just – I think we're in a place where the NFL is littered with some of the best talent the game has ever seen. And that's not just because I'm just watching them right now. It's just there's so many guys that are great all over the place, right? Like – yeah. You could you could take somebody who's number seven on any given week and he could fall to 15 at any moment based on the shuffling and just of how good all these guys are. I'm of the mind that Justin Jefferson's the best in the league and someone will tell you another time that Devontae Adams is the best in the league. You might not be wrong on either of those things. Yeah. But when it comes to watching both of these guys, I know you just described Brandon Ayuk. There is a large like a large sentiment around 49er fans that Brandon Ayuk is the better receiver in terms of route running and Debo Samuel is the better football player overall, meaning getting the ball in his hands and watching him work. And I don't necessarily disagree, but what do you think about Debo Samuel as a route runner? Because I feel that that gets disrespected a little bit too much sometimes. Yeah. First to your point about the quality of receiver play in the league right now, you're 100% right. I mean, if you do any sort of list, like a top 10, top 12, top 15, top 20, et cetera, et cetera, and you feel like you didn't burn somebody, I promise you you did the exercise wrong or you didn't think hard about it enough. Like I just did an article for Yahoo where I ranked the um, top 15 receivers that will be 25 and under this season. Um, and, you know, I put a guy like Amon Ross St. Brown, I think like a 10 11 12 or something and i was like oh this sucks i love amon ross st brown but like i don't i mean there are just other guys that i think are a little bit better so it's a really thing i'm actually working for uh since you're a subscriber you'll be able to see this pretty soon uh for at some point this summer i want to debut like my real life nfl receiver rankings that'll be sortable by position all the type of stuff but i'm not looking for it i'm looking forward to doing it but i'm also not looking forward to doing it because it's really hard it's really hard and it, it will take some time um but debo samuel on the route running i i agree with you that i think we really get like when people talk about the debo samuel role for other players i, I think we think about the gadget stuff the backfield stuff the, the create a touch type thing and there's no question that obviously debo especially from a production standpoint like his um, you know, yards per route run or like his, you know, um, you know, just some general efficiency stats, right? That, that, that That's going to be boosted because of those type of targets that he gets in space. However, I couldn't agree with you more that we do also undersell him, you know, as a true wide receiver too. Like, spoiler alert, I do agree that Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk is a better receiver. He is without question a better man press coverage route runner i think he in a phone booth was uh, i just talked to george kittle on my podcast that was like the way he describes it that like in a phone booth this this guy is like he's hard to cover he's the, one of the hardest guys to cover in the league and I, I think that's true but like there are some real routes that debo samuel runs like a like a big boy you know i actually just said this on twitter today that we were talking people were talking about like who's the best receiver at each route like debo samuel's dig route against zone coverage specifically is like one of the best routes for any receiver in the NFL, especially in his 2021 season. It's like, and all credit in the world of Jimmy Garoppolo, who has his flaws as a player, but Jimmy has the absolute stones 
and sometimes this gets him in trouble. But sometimes oh, yeah. he has this—he has the absolute stones to rifle that thing at the right time, at the right place between two linebackers in the teeth of zone coverage to Debo Samuel running a dig route for then Debo to get five, ten, you know, sometimes freaking forty yards after the catch. So um, that Debo Samuel dig route, slant routes, mostly in breaking stuff like that. He is definitely mostly against zone coverage. He's been in reception perception one of the best zone coverage beating receivers since he came into the NFL. I do think that ability as a route runner, like a true receiver, that's why they're, when you hear, oh, we're going to try LaVisca Chenault in the Debo Samuel role. No, you're not, because he's not going to do that. You know, like no chance. So that that's where uh, he is a truly unique player in that regard. And, and that's the thing is there's a perfect set of skills for both of these receivers that fit both, you know, this team. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think, I think both of them, do things very well. I have been very much in the the camp of Brandon Ayuk's the better route runner. Debo Samuel's still the guy that you don't want to see coming at you with the ball in his hands, right? Like that's a guy that, that, and that's something you can't teach. You can't necessarily teach route running, right? Like, but you can refine that. I don't know how you get someone to be as good as Debo Samuel with the ball in his hands. And I do think that a little bit to your, I think a little bit to your point about Jimmy Garoppolo is I think that was a little bit, and Jimmy, if you're watching this, miss you, buddy. Like I promise, I'm not. I'm not trying to take a dig at you here. Um, it's, it's the game plan around that was just get him the ball, no matter how. But many of those throws, the average depth of target would be a lot shorter. And is that necessarily because it doesn't tailor to Jimmy Garoppolo's game, or is it just getting the ball in the hands of your receiver? I do think that I want to see Debo Samuel with a guy who has a bigger skill set in terms of arm. And I think mm-hmm. hopefully we're finding that and, and we'll get to it. But I told you, we're not going to get away from 49ers quarterbacks, but I do think that Debo Samuel is being overlooked as a receiver at times because of the way he was utilized, which isn't a bad thing because it plays to his skill set. If that makes any sense. It makes complete sense. And, you know, I'm looking back at like Debo Samuel's original route chart from like his rookie year. And I honestly, really the thing, you know, it's funny because he's had like a, um, He's had a fascinating career, right? Because he has this one 2020 season that was almost like a total waste because he clearly played like, you know, uh, not at 100%. He that was, was the worst season uh, for everybody. It was really bad. That was a rough season. But, but and, and still in that season, he, he was great on those sort of slant routes, flat routes, like getting, you know, just getting open really quickly, right? But he was not the same on like p- the dig route that I mentioned or those like deep post routes. Cause if you look back at his 2019 season, if you look mm-hmm. at his 2021 season, yeah, those like big deep over routes, Debo Samuel can make plays on those routes, man. You know, again, it's mostly stuff working over the middle of the field. So I agree his, his, his true ability does get, does get overshine there. And I think it's funny because, you know, like <laughs> I remember when Debo was getting injured at different times, like that 2020 season, um, you know, even just any now, anytime he's like gotten banged up, it's like, there's even people will you know, more, probably more so national people or whatever would be like, mm-hmm. Oh, are we, um, are we going to see Brandon? Ayuk take some of those Debo Samuel r- roles? Cause he's good after the catch too. It's like, no, no, no. Like, they're not, they're not the same player like at all. They're not even really built the same way. You know, Ayuk has this like, like Debo's this kind of compact guy, and I think that's why he's so hard to tackle. You know, he's he's really uh, he, he just runs differently after the catch. Where Ayuk is just, I think he's more explosive. I also think he is a guy that you know the, that wingspan is so freaky for him. But yeah, with with Ayuk, like they just play. You know, the 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 thing I would say with reception perception and, and talking about receivers is like you have to start with where they line up. You know, and obviously Debo lines up in all different positions, and he's a really unique case. But the 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 first time this really occurred to me was uh, the 2018 Pittsburgh Steelers uh, where, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster and uh, he was had his best pr- production season wise, you know, but Antonio Brown was still there. And like, it was a legit, not a legitimate cause it wasn't like a legitimate thing to say, but people were people actually like, oh, is, but people thought it like, is Juju taking a step over Antonio Brown? Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like, well, no, because what, what, Antonio Brown is being asked to do and what Juju Smith-Schuster is being asked to do, those might as well be two different positions. And by the way, what AB is doing as a vertical X receiver, especially at his size, is so much more difficult. And to me, for the Kyle Shanahan offense, you know, with with Ayuk now, like he's playing that Julio Jones position. He's playing that Andre Johnson position in this offense. And again, we get caught up in all of the – 
yak guys, the gadget guys, all this stuff, um, which is all great parts about this offense and why it's such like a pain to defend. But I still think it functions best when it has like a true vertical X receiver that can separate at all levels that can get open against press man coverage. And I mean, buddy, they got one of those right now in Brandon Ayuk, that's for sure. And that's what I have up right here is uh, the 2020 success by route um, chart, which is on reception perception. Guys, if you want this data, it's there for you. You just sign up. Uh, it's worth the money. Absolutely. But this is what's funny about the 2020 year is exactly what you said. Debo Samuel didn't play very much. And Brandon Ayuk had all the emphasis on him. But look at all this green, Matt, everywhere, all green. And and when you think about that, and, and I love that you brought up Juju Smith-Schuster because People discount what Antonio Brown was doing, clearing out defenders, drawing attention, allowing Juju to, to go against the second and third you know, defender. Brandon Ayuk didn't have that in 2019, and he started to put up numbers that the 49ers hadn't seen at the wide receiver position since a guy named like Anquan Bolden, and, and that's right. how long it had been. And then you look at all this green in 2020, rookie uh, Nick Mullen, C.J. Beathard, Jimmy Garoppolo barely this season. Look at all this green, Matt. Just, just go through the 2020 with me. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was so impressive. And I still think, like, he didn't really know, like, all of the nuances of the position yet, which I think actually then bore itself out in, in man, uh, probably the darkest time for reception perception, you know, uh, the the, Brand the Brandon Ayuk doghouse. Uh, oh, oh, no. Hold on to that thought. We'll go right into that right after this, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, you know, I mean, maybe the coaches didn't fully, you know, love everything yet, but, like, with – with Ayuki, he was just so explosive. And and sort of the routes that I was talking about, you know, where he shined as a collegiate player, specifically against, like, off-man coverage because he really had, again, so explosive at, like, the snap points working towards the boundary. Corner route, out route, comeback route. Like, those are, those are hard routes to run for any receiver, especially the corner and the comeback. And, like, Ayuk with the 61.5% success rate uh, the, on the corner route, 81% on the comeback. Like, that's where he does take that step as a and 62%, almost 63% on the on the nine route, vertically stressing out the defense. Like, yeah, even with some of the players they've had on that offense with with Shanahan, they haven't had a guy like that leading up to that point, and they certainly have not had one since. Yeah, absolutely. And then it, it's funny to look at these numbers, right? Nine routes are hard, <clears throat> excuse me, especially particularly in the way that defenses now are employing more of a cover a two safety shell trying to keep everything in front of them as well too so winning on these routes is a lot harder so you got a 62 percent on nine you got a 61 percent on corner and both of those are green so they're above the league average in in the estimation that means that the average is somewhere between 50 55 percent you'd say yeah yeah th those are the two lowest average success rates and this is a question i get like all the time right For just a good example there's not really a good example actually on this chart because uh he has he's well actually good everything. example flat yeah, he's agreeing on everything <laughs> but the flat <laughs> route right like 69.2 percent success rate that's colored as red but the corner route 61.5 percent that's colored green well it's the average success rate on a flat route i think think somewhere around like almost you know 79 80 percent or maybe maybe closer to like 75 percent because it's just really easy to it's it's just a lot easier to get open on a flat route than it is on a damn corner route you know so uh, that's why the average success rate for those routes are lower than the average success rate for some of those routes closer to the line of scrimmage which is always something to remember you know not to bring up a totally different player but like mm -hmm. Why Why do I think Jamar Chase is, like, an elite, elite talent? Well, I mean, he's great at everything. That's one. But, like, right. he has a 75% success rate each of his first two seasons while also running the nine route more. Like, his most – that's his most commonly run route. That's nuts. That's insane. Like, a lot of these guys that run nine routes, you know, the most often, they're not up there in terms of the uh, most – uh, the highest success rate versus man coverage players. So, um, yeah, it's that's a an important thing to note that these guys that are vertical players and they're still getting separation. That's incredibly impressive. I'm gonna pull down this chart, and I do want to I do want to talk about the tough time um, during reception perception with you because it was a tough time for 49er fans as well too. Let's let's talk about it. <laughs> I, I mean, when you look at 2020, right, and you think about it, no Debo Samuel, the bevy of quarterbacks that played, and Brandon Ayuk looks like he's a budding star. And it's, it feels like wheels up, right? Like it's time to go. Yeah. And then Kyle Shanahan and his doghouse. Um, some say it's injury. Some say it has to do with play speed and practice. I will say this. 
whether I agree with Kyle's methods at times, I'm a big, you know, I, I don't know if you know, um, Matt, I, um, I, I'm started a club called Only Shans. I'm a big Kyle Shanahan guy, right? Like I understand, <laughs> yes. like, <laughs> um, but I don't always agree with his methods. But in this case, I will say this about this before I let you speak. Brandon, you came out of the other side of the doghouse. Right. Some people walk in and they don't come out. So what were your thoughts when this was all going on? Because I know 49er fans were like, what is he doing? Why isn't he playing? But there were a lot of things that could have went into it. It's just Kyle's going to do what he wants to do, in my opinion. A hundred percent. And look, you know, we have obviously the benefit of hindsight now, you know, knowing how this knowing that he he did come out on the other Mm -hmm. side of it. Right. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, it was so unexpected. Right. And I mean, you know, this is like 2021 season was the first season that, um, uh, I think I think that was that was the first year that we launched the site, right? So I'm like, oh man, we're gonna have to close shop. Well, well, <laughs> I, I mean, unless you unless you went back on, uh, so twenty, oh twenty, so you, I have 2019 and 2020 data, so I don't know if you went back and charted those other seasons. No, 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 no. I, I've been doing reception perception since okay. 2014, but okay, it was, uh, you know, it's gone through a couple different journeys to okay. the point. Like I used to work with the the fantasy footballers, I contracted the data to them, but I started receptionperception.com, the website. Uh, it has been uh, the was launched in March of 2021. So like, oh, yeah, okay. that was the big that was the big flag plant Ayuk year. And it was like when he can't when it came out in week one, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, this this happened. It's like, wait, what? Nobody I would have loved to know going into the year that this was like what that this was going on. Uh, so I think, though, what has come out really after it, you know, from players, from coaches, from Ayuk, it's like. I think that really the whole the whole thing was like again you mentioned whatever the cause of it was they were clearly riding this guy like Kyle Shanahan specifically who is hard on his receivers like mm-hmm. the the Dante like Dante Pettis got brought up a lot at this time like oh remember Dante Pettis like yeah, and yeah. put him in the doghouse like don't say that yeah, name but, too loud yeah yeah I know I, but it's like but Dante Pettis had like a nice rookie year you mm-hmm. had like he's like special like he could be really special and I think that was why they rode this guy so hard because it's like. Yeah, look at how good you were as a rookie, like production wise and and everything like that. You could be better, like you can be one of the best receivers in the NFL. So that's why they pushed him so hard, and why he, you know, I remember during like really when I saw like new things were starting to turn around the right direction for Ayuk was I think it was right around like the Bears game. It feels like it was like week six or week seven or yep. even like the game before that, you know, and. I, like he was just blocking his ass off, man. And it's like that, that, and he's honestly become a really, really good blocking receiver, uh, which I know really, really gets the butts in the seat. And, you know, like that, that's what, that's what people want to hear about is, is why don't you have that in reception perception, uh, great run blocking uh, as a receiver. <laughs> I've, I've talked so much about receiver run blocking this year and mm-hmm. everybody hates it. I mean, like <laughs> when, when like you, your free agent class is full of like Alan Lazards, you know, like that's going to happen. So, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, like I, I think that it just when he started to really have like show that effort, you know, it was like whatever's going on here, like it's kind of starting to get on the other side. So, and yeah, overall, like his 2021 reception perception data was still really good. You know, he actually took a step against press coverage. He was a little bit better than his rookie year. Zone coverage is a little bit better than his rookie year. His success rate versus man fell a little bit, but was still over 70%, which is what you're looking for. Like if you're going to be an outside receiver and you're going to try to jump into that, like, star or superstar tier or just like a really good starter you want those guys to be over 70 percent. so and especially like as a rookie he was over 75 percent. and when you're over 75 percent, like like i mentioned jamar chase that's like you know you're getting into kind of like superstar territory uh even if you're not like the you know some of the most productive players in the league like these guys who are actual superstars like they're they're in that 75 percent range so um it was a frustrating year but i think uh we got back on track we got yeah. back on track with you as the year went on yeah, and again, there's a multitude of reasons. And again, Kyle's going to do whatever he wants. He doesn't care. I mean, as evidence with this next thing that I'm going to ask you, but I did. I was lucky enough to be at the last two training camps for um for the 49ers almost every single day. And the first year that I went, I walked away and I said, okay, Debo, this is Debo Samuel's year. I mean, he's clearing yeah. everybody. He was he was incredible. Not that Ayuk wasn't, but he was you know ramping up a little bit, right? Like it, it looked like he was he wasn't the guy that we saw in 2020. Then I come back the next year and Brendan Ayuk is smoking everybody. And I'm like, all right, yeah. now this is it. Like he's back. And it's just, 
I'm excited to get back out there this year because I hope to have one of those aha moments again with either of these guys. I hope to come back and say Debo and Ayuk are looking like those yeah, guys. Yeah, they're both going off, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but it was the first year. Debo Samuel was just smoking. Everybody didn't matter. You know, Jason Verrett was playing. He he was the best cover corner on that team for a while, and he was beating him. And then last year, you you, you fast forward to Ayuk, and he's taking these strides on Traverius Ward. Everybody who's guarding him, they couldn't hold him, and it didn't matter who the quarterback was. Speaking of the quarterback, though, Matt, Reception perception is about getting open, right? And they, wide receivers can't throw themselves the ball. But I would be remiss in my duties as a 49ers content creator to overlook <laughs> and not speak about the thing that nobody cares about in 49ers land is the 49ers quarterback. Now, there's four right now. And, and I mean, yeah. at this point, when you've seen this many injuries, you should have five and six at this point. I'm not really against all of that. It's just how many guys <laughs> should actually really start. So it's... Brock Purdy sounds like he's on track for week one. You know, Trey Lance, the guy that they moved heaven and earth for. Uh, Sam Darnold, who everybody seems to be, uh, seems to think is this un uncovered gem, or like, you know, again, that that or has just had a rough go of it. You're Carolina's Panthers, a Carolina Panthers fan, so you could speak a little bit about that as well, too. And then Brandon Allen, uh, Cincinnati Bengals uh, legend is is there as well, too. So does it matter who the quarterback is? for Brandon Ayuk and in your studies I don't know if you if you did the entire year did you see a shift in any way when Brock Purdy took over yeah so just on Darnold uh first because it'd be the fastest one uh well I mean I'm <laughs> Brandon Allen like I don't know what <laughs> no, I'm, I'm obviously being facetious yeah like oh. <laughs> yeah 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 but but Sam Darnold like I think what he what he sh- his Panthers tenure showed because I get it. The Jets were a disaster, but he was also one of the least efficient quarterbacks. And like he was, a, he was a problem as well. And I think what his Panthers tenure showed is that when you can keep, keep him in the box, when you keep everything, like when everything is on schedule, Sam Donald can be a pretty good or at least efficient quarterback. Like if you look at yard, like adjusted yards per attempt or EPA per drop back, like, when he was starting, he was up there as one of the most efficient guys in the league last year, Sam Darnold. But they were running the ball really well. Their production, their uh, their their pass protection was incredible. Uh, their defense was good. You know, even if they didn't, and, and they had DJ Moore, who's an awesome receiver. Love DJ uh, Moore. So like, yeah, love DJ Moore. So so they had they had everything set up for him. And then the year pr- prior, right, like. Christian McCaffrey's there. DJ Moore's there. Like he has answers, right? Sam Darnold in, in 2021. Then when McCaffrey gets hurt, like it kind of all goes to hell because again, like I said, when he's on schedule, like when things are on schedule and everything's going right, Sam Darnold can function. The problem is in the NFL, things are not always going right. Things are not always on schedule. I mean, in the 49ers offense, though, I think that's why people might be intrigued. Like the, the, the last few Sam Darnold hive holdouts uh, might be intrigued with him at the 49ers because Kyle does keep the train on the tracks. Do- like usually there's answers for everybody and they've got these, all these studs on offense too. So I'm, I am definitely not like a let's keep the candle lit for Sam Darnold guy, but I do. There's like a sick part of me that is intrigued to see what he would do if he ever got to start for this team. Now the two, the two other guys, right? Like I think with Purdy, um, I think the most discernible difference with Pur- between Purdy and Jimmy Garoppolo, because you know, you look at some of like the underlying numbers and stuff like that, they're pretty similar. You know, a lot of these quarterbacks are always really good in terms of like EPA per drop back, yards per attempt, stuff like that in the Shanahan offense. But I think he did better pushing the ball vertically outside the numbers, um, more so than Jimmy Garoppolo did bid Brock Purdy. And obviously that really relates to a guy like Brandon Ayuk, because really if you were like a big Ayuk backer that was the, the the thing you always knew with Jimmy Garoppolo that even if he is a fine quarterback like a you know an above average quarterback in the NFL he is a, a in the box player like we said with Debo Samuel like get the ball out over the middle to Debo Samuel and Ayuk has developed a lot in running slants running digs running post routes like working over that middle of the field the cover two breaking routes that this offense can really put defenses in a bind with but what we talked about at the very beginning of this conversation with Ayuk, that stuff like outside the numbers and deep, like that's where he is going to emerge as – like that's where he's going to go from good receiver, very good receiver, to potentially superstar level. If he can – from a production standpoint, if he can be unlocked in that way. And I think Purdy, you know, 
is not like the most physically gifted guy in the world, but he can make plays off schedule and he can push the ball vertically outside the numbers. Maybe not the best in the league at it, but certainly better than Jimmy Garoppolo. So I think that's why he's an interesting fit with Ayuk. And then obviously with Lance, I mean, geez, buddy, you tell me, man. I, 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 I got a chance to talk to Trey Lance at the, at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, just good guy, like really want, just really want things to work out for him, yeah. you know? Um, and I certainly like a player with his skill set and upside and athletic ability and arm talent is really intriguing with both of these players, but obviously, especially with Ayuk from that vertical standpoint, but um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. I, I hope he gets a, I hope he gets a shot. I really hope he gets a shot, but I do understand there. Um, like, you know, I think there's more, there's some folks in the national media that are kind of more so than I am like, not anti Purdy, but don't really get their their fascination with Purdy. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I would know where you stand on the whole like Purdy Lance mm-hmm. thing. But I, I do like I can understand their points that like John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan when they talk publicly, like just being, oh yeah, Purdy's like our starter. He's he's the guy like right now. I get it because again, he kept the train on the tracks like Jimmy Garoppolo did, made good decisions, whatever. I mean, he certainly got lucky on some decision making stuff, but that happens to everybody. Oh, you better and Matt, watch. Well, don't don't say things like that because people get upset when you say objectively. Uh, that's an objective thing. Turnover luck was something that that is a part of Brock Purdy's story. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So he got lucky. You so, so now you you said it, not me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, I'm done now. That's it. I'm done now. <laughs> So he kept the train on the tracks like a lot like Jimmy did, but I think he also added and elevated um, a little more than like your traditional Mullins or, or, or shoot, maybe even more than like a Kirk Cousins type of guy too, you know, that does in this offense. So um, I get it, but I don't know, man, you, you tell me what's going right. to happen. You tell me. So I think again, Brock Purdy deserves every chance to be the guy that starts right away. Right. Like he, he won, you know, he, Seven out of the eight games, I don't really count the eighth game. He didn't get to finish. Every game that he either came in and finished or or started and finished, they won. The offense, I think a lot of people get upset when you say that Kyle Shanahan wants you to be a quarterback who is an instrument in the offense. You need to you need to work this offense and get it in on schedule, stay ahead of the sticks. You, we're not going to throw the ball on first down. That, that, they're 32nd in the league on that. I need you to operate this offense. But when you say that about Brock Purdy, people get the upset as if that's a slight. That is the objective yeah. fact. Whether it's Trey Lance, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo, Nick Mullins, whether it's Brock Purdy, you need to operate the offense. Again, the star of the show is Kyle Shanahan. Remember that. The star of the show is Kyle Shanahan. And when you can operate the offense to the way that Brock Purdy did, I understand exactly why they're enamored with him. They were scoring 30 points a game for the first time since – a guy named Steve Young, think about how long that's happened and how many times they did that as well, right? Again, it's it's all of those things combined. At the same time, I don't understand why people get so upset when people are not exactly like, oh, for 100%, he's going to be the franchise guy ready to go. This is it. Like, yeah. the, why, is, why is there not allowed to be any sort of gray area when it comes to that? And with Lance, um, he just hasn't had a chance to show it. Bad luck, injury, you know, and, and the 49ers are going to go with the guy that they feel gives them the best chance to win. And who could argue that it's it's not Brock Purdy at this point? Like, I mean, you really can't argue that at this point, just based on the fact that we just haven't seen Trey Lance do it. And you've seen Brock do it for so long. So it's just it's a bad situation all around for Trey Lance. I do think yeah. that the NFL has a much higher opinion or they have a uh, a higher a higher chance to they would take a higher chance on him right now at this point, especially if you were to trade for him, you don't have to give up three first round picks, which, you know, is right. another thing that kind of just is a part of the story. But I do think that if Brock Purdy's healthy and he's operating the offense, the way that they saw, we saw last year, whether that leads to a Super Bowl or not, he's going to be the guy. And, and, and I, you really can't push back on that. But the idea that you can't say that you're hesitant to say, he's the guy going forward. That's it. They found their guy, you know, finally over now we have our franchise guy that's the part that is a little bit weird in 49ers land and matt i'm gonna implore you to stay out of 49ers land as well too um you know just 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 keep doing your thing dip a toe in if you want to dip right out because yeah. things, things get a little crazy over here yeah i i um you know number one I've, i have dipped my toes in a little bit obviously with with the iuk <laughs> stuff for sure for sure um and, and also my uh, co-host on on my yahoo show dalton del don is like a massive 49ers fan nice. so uh we end up talking about the 49ers like way too often you know i, I we used to joke last year uh we do this 
uh, stat nerd show, which is like one stat you need to know for every all 32 teams. I would literally set like a, a three to four minute timer. Actually, might have been five minutes. I can't believe I was that generous. Like five minute timer for Dalton on like the 49ers when like you are all like you are only allowed to talk about this team this long. <laughs> but I would get into it too because like I was so you know so into these receivers. So um, yeah, no, all your points are really valid about uh, about uh, about the, the the quarterback situation and specifically with Purdy. I get again. I totally understand their where they are with him, but if like he doesn't sustain that level of play, it wouldn't be surprising either, you know. And, and just for Lance, like I, I do think, like, hey, maybe this whole story is just like a, it's just a real series of unfortunate events, right? And and like if he had lied, like, I am fully on board that the best way to get better is to do the job, is yep. to is to play, is to get live reps. It, it does it that doesn't mean that's universal. But it does to me. I, I think like if Lance, who's just played so little football the last what like three years, four years, yeah, mm -hmm. four years, real right. I yeah. mean, maybe we're talking about a different story if he had some more live game reps. Which also you could put that you could point the finger at the 49ers there and say like, hey, you draft this guy third overall and you kind of tried to walk both uh, sides of the line there with the Jimmy Garoppolo. There. Again, I you're I don't know why I'm saying this to you and the people <laughs> listening. You, you all know this, you know. But so uh, yeah, it's 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 an interesting topic of conversation but i still feel really good about this team and where they're at just because they got so many good players on the offensive side and they obviously again yeah you're right the star of the show the guy really uh holding the you know designing the game is still shanahan he's still going to be around he's still very good at this whole thing 100 percent, guys i matt has been gracious with his time i'm gonna ask him one more question this is a little bit more for fantasy football and i'm gonna let you know out of here but before you do that matt let everybody know one more time where they can find all your content and uh, tell them about reception perception one more time yeah, receptionperception.com is where you can find all this stuff. Um, I appreciate Jason saying he, he thinks it's worth it. I, I definitely oh, yeah. think it's worth it. You know, oh, yeah. the route charts are great, but you're going to get so much stuff there, you know, and I'm still working on cranking out a bunch of profiles over the next month here, uh, you know, on, on guys that are kind of at the top level of the game. But right now we've got like year two receivers, year three, four receivers, uh, the prospects are coming in right now. So, um, you know, Ayuk is up there right now. As you mentioned, Debo will be up there in the next player drop coming soon. So that's really where you can find all that stuff. And uh, Matt, I just, uh, if I could ask a small favor, can I get some Paris Campbell hype? Because I feel like I'm the only person who still wants to see Paris Campbell oh, succeed. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> although i will i will say this about paris campbell um you know his 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 profile is up on reception perception and um i actually think he you know the the the, the giants are funny right now because they have like this glut of slot receivers i know um but i think he actually his best stuff is really not like traditional slot receiver stuff mm -hmm. like i don't think he's the route runner that you need to be to op be as like a true slot but he his best routes in RP are the post and nine the corner. Like I think actually from like a vertical sense, he can help this team out, stretch the defense out. I am interested that they're using him like all over the formation. I know we talked about the Debo Samuel rule and how that can mm -hmm. be so dumb, um, but I think he, he actually is an interesting player in in like sort of a you know getting him swing passes out of the back. But he just he's not like a real slot receiver, and that was always kind of my pushback on him uh, with Indianapolis. But I don't know, at least he's at least interesting. I, I I'm willing to believe anything about that Giants like slot receiver rotation at this point. <laughs> I mean, well, after we saw Richie James, 49ers legend, go over there and revitalize his career and like move on to the Kansas City, anything's possible. And I and I did read the report today that that they were using Paris in the backfield. I don't know. I mean, they may not have Saquon Barkley if things are whatever. This is not a giant stick anyway. I just wanted to throw I, I just feel like I'm one of the few people that's holding on to like dynasty stock of, of Paris Campbell, and I don't know what I'm holding on for or what I can get for him. So it would be nice to see him break out a little bit more. But uh the, the discrepancy in ADPs when it comes to Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel. So in 2020, coming off of that season that Brandon Ayuk had, 2021, everybody was in on Ayuk over Samuel. Well, then Debo Samuel goes on and has a historic season. So then you flip it over to 2022, and it flips again. Now everybody's in on Debo Samuel. And then the people who bought the dip on Brandon Ayuk were actually rewarded because you, you got a little bit more than what you paid for in terms of stock. Is it starting to feel like I think this is going to be the first time back-to-back -back years that Brandon Ayuk is going to be the better value? Because I just don't know if I can invest, like I guess like a 209 or a 210 or, yeah. or even a high third in Debo Samuel. It's just, it's just too big of a risk. I think so. Not even just from like anything about injuries, right? Um, guys, again, I think the most valuable receivers in the NFL, and I think this is true in fantasy too, are guys who 
stretch defenses out or who, who are going to get vertical passes, who are going to have the, that higher average depth of target. And that just like objectively at this point is Brandon Ayuk. Um, you know, is from especially beating press man coverage, he's going to be that guy. Like, I mean, really, like, you know, I don't, I don't think we re- actually stressed it enough that like in his 2022 player profile, Brandon Ayuk, from a reception perception standpoint, 91st percentile success rate versus man and 79.3% success rate versus press. Like, this guy is ready to take the jump into like I, I have superstar, superstar wide receiver status. So yeah, I think this is the year where I think it will be two years in a row for IU can, and look, Debo can still be a really good fantasy player, but you know, the, the, the reality is like that, despite the way the season went last year, that, that ha- ADP like hasn't f- really flipped yet where Ayuk is still going after. And, and I, I mean, he can easily be the best pass catcher on this team um, from a fantasy standpoint. So yeah, I, I will definitely be in on Ayuk again this year, but Hey, that's no surprise. Right. And I'll be buying the dip on him as well too. It's all about value. Like, I feel like there's only one or two guys that I'd be taking early on. Like I I'm of the sentiment that I feel like Justin Jefferson's like a safe one Oh one pick. And a lot of people are like, are you crazy? You're taking a wide receiver. I feel like he's safe because I feel like he can still give you a little bit more upside. I think there's a touchdown positive regression that he's about to get possibly a little bit more of a target share. Now that Adam Thielen's not there, but when it comes to Debo, it feels like you're drafting him at a ceiling. And when you draft them at the ceiling, you're not going to get anything more out of it. It's it's I'm always looking to draft guys that I'll get a little bit more out of. And I think that's what Brandon Ayuk is. But guys, Matt, thank you so much for giving me your time, man. I really appreciate it. Big fan of the work. Make sure you guys sign up for Reception Perception. Uh, I, I promise you guys, if you like wide receivers just like I do, it's it's incredible to watch. And it'll give you a leg up in your fantasy league. But it'll also give you more insight into your favorite team because Matt's a big uh, Brandon Ayuk guy as well, too. So, um, Matt. Thank you uh, again for joining. Guys, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for when we go live. Matt, tell them where they can follow you on Twitter too before we get out of here. Yeah, just at Matt Harmon underscore BYB is where you can find me. There you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, whatever. And uh, yeah, look, really enjoyed talking with you, man. Really enjoyed talking about these two receivers. Anytime I can get on a podcast, talk about a great receiver duo, I am happy to do it. Appreciate you, Matt. Love your work, man. Thank you for uh, being somebody who's easily accessible and, and easy to speak to. And and, uh, you know, and not only informative. So it, I appreciate your time. I know you're really busy, man. I know you, that cross country trip was a lot. So but uh, guys, thank appreciate you guys so much again. Like this video, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you follow Matt everywhere. Sign up for Reception Perception. Um, until next time, we're out of here. Welcome, everybody. Let's go, Niners. My name is Jason Aponte. Jason Aponte.